And I'm here in Greenville now with our 7 News medical expert, Dr. Cedric McFadden. We're going to talk about some of the questions we're getting on the 7 News Facebook page right now. You can continue to post those there online. Someone called into the newsroom as well. We get calls sometimes. And this question coming in saying that he has a wife who's a massage therapist, and he's pretty concerned about her returning to work, Dr. C. He says that he wants to know how great the potential for infection is since she can't wear gloves but is wearing a face mask. Yeah, that's a reason to be concerned because that's a, that's a field where you're in close proximity to another person and there are different people coming in and out that may increase that risk. You know, you should do everything that you can do, whether it being wearing a face mask, maybe seeing if the uh, patrons can also wear a face mask, uh, but also looking at what your local uh, governmental officials are telling you, what the you know rules are for your particular line of work, uh, but making sure that you're taking time to sanitize the uh, equipment or whatever you may be using, uh, and doing everything you can to you know disinfect the surroundings where the customers are going to be coming in and out of. And then, but of course, washing your hands as soon as you're washing done, your right? Washing hands, especially if you can't wear gloves. Washing your hands still works. It's still uh, and effective. not touching your face or anything yes. in the middle of that. Yes. All right, let's talk about Marissa. She's asking about summer camp, which is a big Big issue now that we have heard that the governor has put out some guidelines to allow these folks to operate this summer effectively mm -hmm. and efficiently and hopefully with uh, prevention of any disease. Let's talk about what families need to consider. She's asking Marissa, is it safe to have our kids gather for summer camp? Yes, yeah, so part of that depends on where the summer camps are. Uh, what's happening regionally f with COVID-19, and the other piece is looking at what other options there are for summer camps. You know, a lot of camps are doing virtual camps this year, which is a little bit different, but it is an option that you can consider. Uh, and then the types of camps, you know, whether we're talking about sleepaway camps, we're talking about just a running or biking camp, where maybe slightly, you know, less risky with being outside, you know, out in the open air versus being in a confined space uh, in a block building camp or something like that. So the types of camps may have something to do with it as well. And Bill is asking, I'm guessing Bill might be a business owner. How, when will it be appropriate to expand capacity in stores? And what do we need to keep in mind as, as those kind of things change? So those, you know, those requirements or those rules come into place based on what's happening locally. So a lot of those regulations change depending on what the numbers are looking like. So as those numbers improve, we're likely to see more capacity at these particular stores. So that's the first thing, to pay attention to the laws. And, and because the public officials, they're looking at it for sure. that reason alone. But making sure that when you do open, that you have some things in place, whether it's alternating aisles, whether it's hand washing stations or sanitation within the store with employees wearing masks or, you know, the patrons wearing masks as well when they get there. Dr. Cedric McFadden keeping us up to date answering all your questions. Thank you so much. And we, of course, will do this again. Uh, so make sure you head to the 70s Facebook page and add your questions to the list.